All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. And today we're going to be doing a little project from scratch using three different materials and a total of two different machines. So if you want to see how we're going to take two sheets of colored plastic and one sheet of white acrylic and create this guy, stick around and I'm going to walk you through the process that I used uh, to make these guys and uh, maybe give you a project idea that you can do for yourself. So stick around, we'll be right back. All right guys, so as many of you may already know, uh, my daughter is in the band and being a band parent, you have to do certain things to help them out. And collecting parking is one of the things that I do at our home ball games. Well, the signs that the team had and the school had are getting a little dated, had some issues, didn't really look up to speed. So I volunteered to come up with something a little better and uh, basically took what they had, which was just a piece of uh, metal with stickers on it, and I've recreated it using the plastic and the acrylic. So I thought it turned out pretty good. And so today I was gonna kind of walk you through the steps that it took and how I went about making this uh, using the Atom Stack Hurricane and the Jinmitsu 4040 Pro Max uh, to come out with this product. So let's get started, guys. So for the back, I used some uh, extruded, uh, this is the name of it, Acrylite ex Extruded uh, Acrylic. It's white in color. Uh, I did cut this on the Hurricane. It cuts like butter. Uh, I'm really, I haven't really ever done a lot with acrylic, but since getting the Hurricane, it's light burn compatible. It just flows pretty good for me. So I've been, I've been using it a lot, been doing a lot more with acrylic. All right, so this is what I decided. I try to use materials that I had on hand so I didn't have to purchase a lot of stuff because this is a donor job. I'm not getting paid for this one. So uh, be sure to hit that like button. So at least I'll get some <laughs> views from the video. Uh, but use the acrylic for the background because I wanted it to be white, but I wanted it to be, you know, it's not going to be out in the weather a lot, but I wanted it to be somewhat weather resistant from rain and stuff like that because it's potentially going to get rained on from time to time. Uh, these signs stay put up inside the uh, building except when they're having ball games. So long term exposure to the sunlight and stuff like that, not really a concern. So for the letters, the school colors are red, white, and blue. So of course I wanted the letters to be red and blue. And so I had uh, this stuff here to work with. But the problem I had, guys, is this is an acrylic. I'm not real sure what this is. It feels remarkably like either PVC or ABS. So, as many of you may already know, PVC, ABS, not necessarily something you want to do a lot of cutting with in lasers and generating a lot of gases. PVC especially. So I decided, you know what, just to be on the safe side, we'll use a CNC and I'll use a cutting bit and we'll cut this stuff out and do it that way as opposed to lasers, keep it safe. Also, there's one little more benefit to using a CNC versus a laser that many of you may have not thought about. So I'm gonna point that out and show you here. So the thing with uh, using a CNC versus the laser is, as we all know guys, our lasers are three axis at best, you know, you fourth axis if you, if you wanna include the rotary. Uh, we don't have fifth axis lasers. So in order to cut something out, it's gonna be a 90 degree cut. No matter what it is, it's 90 degrees, unless you do some weird stuff with your material. But cutting out letters like this, the edges are always gonna be square because the laser beam comes directly down, cuts through. But with a CNC, guys, you can actually generate beveled edges on your material when you cut it. And you do this by using a V-bit or a sharp pointed bit. In this situation, I used a 90, uh, 30 degree V-bit that comes with the Jinmitsu uh, 4040 Pro Max. And because it's a 30 degree bit, I don't know how well you can see that, I end up with about a 15 degree angle on the front profile. So that gives it that cool, you know, cut out custom look in my opinion. So if you're cutting stuff out with your CNC, just remember if you want a 45 degree angle beveled edge, you know, cut it with a uh, 90 degree bit. If you want it at 30 degrees, 
you don't cut it with a 60 degree V-bit. And if you want a 15 degree, cut it with a, with a 30 degree bit because whatever the angle of that bit is, half of that is gonna be your little beveled edge. So you get this cool effect on the letters uh, when you put them on there. And also the way I'm doing it, it, it makes it match up with the laser etched onto the background right there. So let's get into light burn guys and I'm gonna show you how I did the design and how I laid out the bulk of the, uh, the background for gluing of the letters and then we'll move to the letters. All right guys, like many of you are probably aware, I prefer to do the majority of my designing in light burn. Not that it's any better, uh, it's just that's what I'm used to. So I'm gonna bring in an image of the sign that they had just for reference and like I said, I'm trying to duplicate it. I, I know it doesn't necessarily have to be, but hey, they like the way the old one looked. I figure they'll like the newer one. So I'm gonna design this entire job in Lightburn. Uh, I will be exporting it over to VCar for the CNC work, but you'll kind of see how I lay things out. Uh, this is just gonna be the background shape and I'm just wanting it as big as I can get it. Uh, but not too terribly big. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make that little uh, rectangle there, almost the size of the work area. I'm limited by my material as well. So getting that to fit on there, uh, I'm gonna go over here and round the edges. Uh, I think this is a uh, 10 millimeter uh, bevels for the edges, just to keep having those sharp corners. You know, it, to me, it just makes things look more finished and clean uh, when you round those edges like that. Uh, the next step is just going to be to lay the text out and select the font that I want and get it uh, as big as I need it to be. All right, for the sake of time, guys, I went ahead and uh, cut some of the font selection and resizing out for you guys. Uh, I'm just going to center this thing up by selecting the, the, the back design first, the top one, uh, holding control together, and then just hit the little bullseye. I'm going to be changing that over to a line. Uh, what I'm doing here is I want to kind of just leave a little etch line in the material just to kind of give me a, a cheat for where my lettering is going to go. Uh, this I don't want it to burn all the way through. I literally want it to just be visible so that when I'm gluing these uh, numbers and letters and stuff on here, it makes that job a little easier. I don't have to worry about trying to get everything lined up. Uh, the white acrylic is going to be really hard to see these lines on, but... You know, with proper lighting, it will make lining up this text a lot easier uh, in the long run. So I'm going to take that one. Basically, I'm going to duplicate it, if you notice right here. And I'm going to run that to the other side and just rotate it around. Uh, that way, I make sure that the font and everything is the same. You can create them individually, but I just wanted to make sure I had the same size font. And I'm just going to set these two guys on the sides uh, to make it look like the one that they already had. So. So at this point, guys, basically, I just got a little bit of alignment, centering, just make sure everything's where it needs to be. Uh, and we're pretty much through with the design. Now, the secret to this is, uh, once I get it done, I'm going to use this for the CNC. So I'm just going to put the settings in here to cut with. I'm going to run 20 in the beginning uh, and set my Z offset back to zero. I've been doing some experimenting. I will tell you that because, I guess, because I left... And, and this was a mistake on my part. <laughs> I left the paper on the white acrylic, 20 millimeters per second. I had to round up running it two passes. And guys, before you cut something like this, pull that paper off of there because it was a mess trying to get all those little tiny pieces of paper after that, that little etch line cut the holes. So uh, yeah, that was a mistake on my part. Uh, I paid for that one, but we're not gonna we're not gonna put that in the video. We'll just let you know that pulling those little pieces out between those letters was a pain. Yeah, right here. See? <laughs> so right now I am making a, a whole bunch of little pieces, little tiny pieces of uh, that tape that I had to pull off later. Uh, luckily, though, once I did this one, I realized the error of my ways and the next one that I did. I did not do this. Uh, the next one, as you can see here, uh, of the two of two, <laughs> I peeled it off before I did it. And it was much, much easier to get that paper off of there. So pro tip, pull that stuff off before you cut it. All right, once those are all cut, I'm going to go over here. I'm creating a new folder. And I'm going to export this file as an SVG so that I can bring it over into VCarve using the import uh, function. So that's where we're headed now, over to VCarve. 
and just laying out a workspace that is comparable to the size of the material that I have. Uh, I like to try to keep, you know, the material the size of this little design in here. You don't necessarily have to, but I had basically a 300 by 300 piece of plastic, and so that's what I made my work area, just so I can make sure I don't run off and spill over the edges of my workspace. If your material is bigger than what you're creating in uh, V-Carve, that's okay, but I, I would always make sure your materials are just as at least as big or bigger than uh, the little canvas that you're creating in VCarve. Uh, so now I'm importing that file that we exported from Lightburn, and you'll see when I bring it in that it's basically going to be the exact same file, uh, but it's just going to be just basically an art graphic file, and then all I've really got to do is lay it out and assign my feeds and speeds to it to get everything to cut out. All right, fast forward through a little bit of uh, moving, organizing, and reconfiguring to try to limit wasted space. And I've got this thing ready to assign cuts to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all that. I just went ahead and grouped it just to make sure that it doesn't come ungrouped. And I'm going to be setting my speeds and everything for this. Now, keep in mind this material and the Jinmitsu 4040 Pro, not something I do a lot of. So I'm just taking my best guess based on what I've done with acrylics, plastics, and ABSs in the past with the other machines. And uh, I'm going to best guess it and take a whack at it. So that's what I've done is I've just basically set some, some best guess settings in there. Uh, and you'll get to see what those are here in just a second. Uh, I'm importing the settings from that bit from the Shapoko for acrylic. And then I'm just, like I said, eyeballing it and figuring out exactly where I want it to run uh, to try to get this done. And as you can see, I'm basically gonna just import uh, the acrylic settings in here, but I've got it set up as a PVC sheet because I'm pretty sure that's what this material is. I'm gonna be setting my spindle speed kind of low. Uh, with plastics, I like to stay around eight to 9,000. Uh, the feed rate on this, uh, like I said, this is all guesswork, but I'm going to run 150 uh, inches per minute, and the plunge rate, I'm just going to leave it at 17, because this stuff, I don't want it to melt and start adhering to the bit. So the last step, guys, is to export this over to the little shared file that's on my controller machine that controls my CNC. I've got my network set up on the shared uh, drives so that I can simply save it from this computer to that one and then from there I can open up candle on that machine and send it to the CNC once we get it zeroed and that's what we're going to be doing so let's move over to the CNC
All right, guys, so as always, I'll be dropping some links down below if you're interested. And before anybody asks, this is the glue that you see I'm using in this video. Uh, this is the medium uh, Starbond CA glue. I bought the three pack. It comes with the thin, medium, and thick. And the medium for this application seemed to give me the best job. Now, I wasn't trying to be too particular with it. Uh, as, as always, <laughs> I didn't want to make a big mess, but this... You know, with this white background, these letters, you know, a little bit of getting carried away with the glue, not going to be that noticeable. Uh, one thing, too, is after I got all this glue together, I took some uh, spray paint, some clear coat spray paint, and spray painted the entire thing. Two, th two reasons I did that. One, I wanted to give it a uniform finish uh, across the entire sign, whether it be the acrylic or the letters. And two, that clear coat actually acts to further adhere the letters in place uh, because when you when you spray the clear coat you know it's kind of like a thin layer of glue that you're spreading across there to kind of hold things together and so that's why i put that on there and hopefully it'll cut down a little bit on the reflection because the as you can see this stuff's pretty reflective so hopefully it'll make it more uh brilliant and less reflective <laughs> that's the hopes anyway all right, guys, so this is a fairly simple project, and if you don't have a laser that is capable of cutting uh, acrylic, you could substitute uh, wood in here, especially if you had some uh, finished, pre-finished materials that you could paint white and get a real, real shiny, slick finish to it. It would look basically the same. You just wouldn't have quite the same level of water resistance if it gets rained on or whatever. Uh, but for the small CNC's, guys, this is one of those things that... To me, yes, I could have had letters cut out of a sticker and put on here, or I could have cut them on a, a laser, used a different material and painted it. But sometimes the look of having those beveled edges and having those, uh, those just it just looks better with it being a raised level instead of stickers and having those beveled ed edges to me sometimes adds an extra layer of appeal to it versus the straight edges from the laser. And besides that, with this material, not knowing for sure what it was, there were some safety concerns with using the laser on it. And I really didn't want to be painting a whole bunch of little pieces of plywood. Uh, the plastic is going to be a lot more durable. It's a lot you know, easier to handle and not break the letters when you're cleaning everything up, putting it together with the glue. So all in all, I just felt like the plastic was a better approach for this project from where I wanted to go with it. So, uh, and it turned out pretty nice. So. Thanks to uh, the Adam Stack for being able to cut the white acrylic so easy, as well as the Jinmitsu did an excellent job on cutting out the letters. And I think the band director and the band members will be really happy with the signs. So that's it for today, guys. Just a quick project for you. Just showing you that just because you have the smaller machines doesn't mean you can't make some pretty interesting projects. So uh, I hope this inspires you to make something of your own. If it does, feel free to drop a comment below, go over to my Facebook page, and uh, send me a message, show me the pictures, what you've done, or over to Laser Engraver community page and drop some photos over there. Uh, and as always, guys, check us out Sunday nights, 7 p.m., me and Steve on the live show. Uh, go hit that bell and get that reminder for the show, and uh, we'll see you on Sundays. But until next time, be safe and have a good day.